Hi, I'm Dan and I'm from Boston, Mass. And I'm Jen and I'm from Orlando, Florida. Mainly we wanted to slow down life, enjoy another culture, yeah. and uh, get out of the rat race. Yeah, she's a boxer and she's three years old and she her name is Chloe. And she's crazy. No. <laughs> The thing that worried me the most is that her breed is a boxer, so boxers um, usually are on the no-fly list because of her stub nose, so we were really concerned about finding a flight for her and what airline would accept her, and if she would do well in the flight, especially because for her, she gets extremely stressed out when she's in a kennel. Um, so we don't usually kennel her, so for her to be in a kennel and fly all the way to another country, it was a very... Con for me because I wasn't sure how she would be when she got here. Yeah, we were limited on any airlines that would fly her. There was only one that we found. Most others were not responsive or online said they weren't flying dogs at that time period. Yeah. Due to COVID, I think. Jackie's online guide was very helpful. It was very detailed. I was able to um, go step by step through the guide and um, finding a, a vet that was able to understand the process as well was very helpful, so they were able to um, help. So the process to get your dog ready to be shipped to another country in general uh, is very time sensitive. Yes, you right? wanna start looking a few months, I would say a few months before you're ready to fly out to make sure you have all the vaccines she needs. For the international health certificate. Yes. And those all have, some have timelines before the dog can even fly. You have to have some of them 30 days before mm -hmm. your date of flight. Like the rabies vaccine. Our dog had a three year rabies vaccine, but she had to get another one because it had to be within the 30 days and six, no more than six months and no yep. less than 30 days before she flew. Um, I didn't realize that I figured she had her three year rabies vaccine. She was good, but you have to make sure it's within that time frame. Um, and there is another vaccine that um, she never got, that I never even heard of, was the lepto, lepto vaccine. Um, and then when we went to do the health certificate, the vet told us she needed that vaccine and then she couldn't fly within th three weeks. So we had to push back our flight time uh, due to that. So just make sure you go through the list thoroughly and make sure that they, ha they have all the vaccines covered within the time required. Yep. yep, and then there's kennel requirements for the different airlines, yes. the size of your kennel. It's got to be a certain size for your, your dog. They have to yeah. be able to basically have a luxurious flight. It's a very detailed. So we went bigger just to be safe with our kennel because she was a bigger dog. So so uh, Coba Airlines is who we went through, and um, we had a difficult time contacting them specifically. Um, because but, like most people, you try to contact them by phone. And the yeah. only way we could get a hold of them was by email. We yeah. reached out to some people on the on the Panama relocation group, and somebody was able to send us the email contact okay. for Copa. Once we did that, they were responsive, yep. and we got Very all helpful. the info we needed. So we were in uh, Mississippi, and we had to my, me and my daughter had to drive down with the dog to Miami to fly her out of Miami to get her a straight flight to Panama City. Yeah, I think most people fly either out of L.A., Houston or Miami, Orlando airports to fly yeah. their, their pups. The shorter, shortest flights and um, the time of year is also a factor because if it's too hot or too cold, the airlines won't fly the animals. So we used um, a contact through Jackie Ling and um, they were able to receive the dog when she came in. Um, all I had to do was get my luggage, go down to um, to the exit part, and he met me there. Um, and we were able to get her there. We, he took care of everything. So He drove her to the hotel? Yeah, he also um, drove her to the hotel where we had to stay and quarantine for three days yeah. with our dog. <laughs> there was a three-day quarantine requirement at the time. Not anymore, because you the U.S. was on a high risk for COVID at the right. time. We bought a, a, we bought a car in Panama City yeah. and drove ourselves uh, six, seven hours, roughly. With yeah. our dog, but we, we got, had a lot of luggage. Yeah, so we, we had used to... a company to ship our suitcases. We had like 14 suitcases and the dog kennel 
that she flew in. So we used a, a transportation company to drive in a truck. They just drove the suitcases. Right. And it was, like, it was like $10, all. roughly $10 <laughs> a suitcase. Yeah. And then, so we were, all, me, him, our four children, and our boxer in the back seat. So that's why we had to get a company to take all of our luggage so that she could be comfortable in the back and our kids could be comfortable in the seats. So finding well, a place that would accept dogs was, I think, fairly easy because most, most people have dogs here. Yeah. And there's tons of dogs well, there's a decent amount of dogs roaming around, you know, doing their, their, their daily routes. They like to walk and roam and then they, they go back home. Our yes. biggest challenge was because we were going to get our stuff shipped from the yeah, States we in needed a container. An empty house. So we needed an empty house. We needed it big enough to fit all of our stuff. And we were looking for a fenced in yard. So for the requirements that we needed, we couldn't find everything. Like this, this is not a fenced in yard, but we worked on training her to listen and obey and come back and the kids will walk her sometimes on the leash. But for the most part, she's been really well behaved in a non fenced yard. We have not needed a vet since we got here. So we got here in November, um, but we haven't needed one, but we have uh, a few friends who've used vets. So we have recommendations if we do need one and where to go if there is an emergency for her. So. Yeah, one of our friends is using a vet right now because the dog is having some some issues. And so her vet visits are about 20 bucks each. And, and David, very good vet. Yes. Uh, and then if she has tests or exams, they might be like 30, 40, 50 bucks. Actually, the vet made a house call on a holiday because the dog was having some seizures. And for the vet visit and whatever... Um, medication she gave the dog on a holiday it was 50 bucks yeah, i think affordable. in the states the average is like 85 90 bucks for just a visit <laughs> for the vet and then plus your any meds you get or you're easily spending fecal. over a hundred dollars anytime you visit a vet in the states and if it's an emergency forget about it. it's hundreds of dollars yeah so. a weekend is like double yeah. yeah we've been fortunate enough to um have a healthy dog and she's has had no issues and I know I said earlier like that she stresses out when she's in the kennel and everything and she arrived she saw us and she was extremely happy um, and she loves it here the weather is just absolutely perfect for her because with a snub-nosed dog any heat or extreme cold is not healthy for them but she wants to come outside just to lay in the sun out here because she just loves it she's way happier here I think the only issue I would say is the food thing. Um, we had really good food for her in the States and I was wondering if I could find it here and I haven't been able to and it's too expensive to ship. So we transitioned her to a food that I'm not too happy about. So I'm looking into feeding her, um, like cooking her food <laughs> and just feeding her healthy that way. Um, we have a friend of ours who does, she has two Huskies here and she feeds them um, just like normal food human food cooks it for them and lets them eat it and she said it's actually more um, beneficial and less expensive that way so if you want your name brands they have Royal Cane in here uh, Yukonoba uh, Pedigree I want to say they have a lot of the name brands you have in the States yeah we um, we went hiking with her and she absolutely loved it we had her on a leash but she just wanted to go so we got to a point where we were able to let her and she just took off and she would come back and she was so happy. She just loved it. Yeah, she likes to be out front, kind of leading and then turn the around, check on us, make sure we're good yeah. and go on. She mainly just likes to come out here, lay in the sun. She plays with the dog next door. They run back and forth and bark at each other. <laughs> and then sometimes she'll see a random dog because there's stray dogs always or just dogs walking around all the time and she'll just go play with them. But. Yes, and my oldest daughter wants to rescue a dog too, so <laughs> she's all right with that. We might have a few. I love it here. Um, I miss my friends and family from the States, but we've made some really good friends here. The kids have made some really good friends, and they're extremely happy. I just asked them the other day um, if they wanted to move back to the States, and they're like, no. They got all concerned because they just they love being here. So. Yeah, I yeah. Life great. here has, has been smooth. You know, a lot of stuff for the transition, you know, getting your paperwork and license and all that. Um, but I'm enjoying it. it. My, my days are freed up. 
now I, I can do what we enjoy to do and hobbies that I'm interested in and mm -hmm. investing. Yeah. Um, less stress, más tranquilo. <laughs> yeah, definitely a slower pace. Um, we actually got here in April and then we went back to the States to, to collect our dog and to get all the documents and everything that we needed. And as soon as we landed in the airport in the States, it was like everyone was rushing by. And it was just, we just felt the stress all of a sudden when we got back to the States. And then um, when we came back here, it was just calm and it just feels so nice. Oh yeah, at first when we got here, um, my kids were like, where are all the young people? <laughs> But um, through connections and stuff, through Facebook, and um, we were able to connect with uh, the younger crowd and find um, some friends our age and with kids especially because we've got two little ones and we've got two teenagers. So we were able to find a good group of teenagers, a good group of little ones, and they all get along really, really well. So yeah, I think Be between here and and Volcan, there's plenty, plenty yeah. of young families. Uh, a lot we're of still, homeschooling families. We haven't families. even met. All the families, no. obviously, but um, yeah, our, our our days and weekends are never dull. We we got plenty of people mm -hmm. to socialize with and hang out. Yeah. Our our age, younger than us, older than us. So, yeah. and I think more and more people are coming out to mm -hmm. to Boquete and to Panama, and to just experience a different. And there's Pace a lot of, of activities life. for the kids as well. Um, even friends of ours have created these activities for the kids, so that way they, they have things to do. And there's just there's yeah. so much to do here. There's a gym, uh, like a home for gym. The kids. There's woodworking, yep. adventuring, a lot of nature, the, the Gualaca uh, River, yep. the waterfalls, the trails. We're always finding something new We're and making new it's parks, exciting. Walking mm -hmm. trails for the kids and. Mm -hmm. And stuff. I would just say that even though we did spend a lot of money getting our dog here, um, it was worth it, and the kids are happier, and it, it was worth it for me. Yeah, so. and the, the online guide kind of walks you. Well, it does walk you through um, the timelines and, and the stuff that you need, and then there are, there are resources mm -hmm. for if you want to just hire a company and have them do the whole thing. Uh, I'm more on the frugal side, so I like to do my research. <laughs> And it made more sense for us to, you know, drive our dog from Gulfport to Miami, rent a car, do the Airbnb, put her on a flight, same flight as her and my daughter. And it was three hours, so it's less stress for the dog. Yeah. Uh, and it saved us a couple bucks. So it worked out. But yeah. her, her ticket was more expensive than all six of us flying. Combined. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But it was worth it. I would yeah. say it was worth it. Yeah. The kids love that she's here, and I love that she's here. So. I've, and I've gotten my money's worth out of the uh, online guide. Oh, for yeah, sure. absolutely. Hi, I'm Lana Harrison, and I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I moved with Greg, my partner. Greg is from Okotoks, Alberta, Canada. And we moved July 28th of 2021 with Jem. So Jem is, uh, four, well, she's now 14 years old. She was 13 when we moved. She is a Shih Tzu Bichon Cross. She's five and a half kilos and she's pretty laid back. We live about the length of two blocks behind Los Sandros Plaza. So we are on a gated uh, complex of three homes. Our landlord uh, owner uh, of our house uh, has a home, vacation home on the same property. And there is another casita beside us, a uh, long-term renter. We hardly ever see him. Uh, so we have a full view of Yeremio Mountain. So this is our view. We are on our veranda Anytime we're home, this, 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 is, this is where we live, is on our covered veranda. So th this, was the, this was probably the selling point to our home, is our, our covered veranda. We're in a uh, non-traditional Panamanian home. We're in a log cabin. Uh, the owner saw the home in a magazine and bought the plans and then had a builder uh, come here to Panama and, and build it for him. So we're in... Uh, in between 
It's about a two-story log cabin home. And again, our covered veranda is where we live uh, almost all day when we're home. It's, it's wonderful. And so we are within walking distance of everything and anything we need. The bakery, the fruit market, Servitechnics, uh, the ATM at Super Baru, all we can walk to at least a dozen, uh, if not more, uh, restaurants and cafes within five to 10 minutes. Uh, we do have a car. Uh, we bought the car so that we go to the beach. Uh, we do have a car. We don't use it all that often. However, yeah, we're in uh, close walking distance to just about anything, and well, everything and anything we need. So moving Jim from Canada to Panama, yes, was uh, an exercise. Uh, I had been in contact with my local vet. She knew that I was moving and so she was well prepared in the process and filling out the paperwork. So uh, I gave her a copy of the new Canada Food Inspection Agency health certificate form uh, a couple of weeks prior, maybe a month prior to when I moved and so that she had it on file and so I made an appointment. We filled out the paperwork and that actually took quite a bit of time because we found some typos on it and they were critical typos that Jem may not have been let into Panama had we not found those. We got all that paperwork done, immediately went over to the Canadian Food Inspection Agency office, which I had made a prior appointment with for that federal vet, that licensed vet to, to sign the form. He signed the form. Then I immediately went over to uh, our D local DHL office and couriered those forms to an agency <laughs> long story, but an agency that I hired called Capital Authentication Agency in Ottawa, and that is their job. They, they uh, prepare and help you through the process on what documents you need and what needs to be notarized and authenticated, notarized or authenticated or both. And I hired him to help the process because Global Affairs Canada, who I also had to use to get the my documents including the health certificate authenticated they changed the rules with two weeks before I left and they typically have a 10-day turnaround and unfortunately they changed the rules and they were now wanting a minimum 30 working days to process documents so uh, that was a little that was quite shocking so anyways, I hired the agency to handle my pet certificate and two other documents. So he received the documents and then he handled getting the documents in and out of Global Affairs Canada, uh, getting them in to be authenticated and out uh, within two days, because remember you have 10 days. I have 10 days to actually fly, land in Panama. Then they also had to go to the Panama consulate and then the documents were supposed to come back to me in Winnipeg because the pet, uh, your pet is to fly with the original documents. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to save some time and I'm going to phone the uh, Sea Air Forwarders is the company that handles pet cargo for Copa out of Toronto. So I was in contact with them virtually from when I booked my ticket. And uh, Janine at Sea Air, I uh, contacted her directly uh, via phone call and every phone call, every email, they held my hand. She held my hand through the entire process because it was so stressful. I flew Winnipeg to Toronto, Air Canada with her in the cabin. Uh, they had an embargo on her breed, uh, so she could not fly cargo. So she flew in cabin, Winnipeg to Toronto, and then uh, stayed overnight in Toronto. And then uh, again, we flew from Toronto to Panama City with her in cargo. Jem had two pre-checks before we flew. So I had to arrive in Toronto 24 hours before the direct flight from Toronto because that was her first pre-check. And uh, they check the uh, crate, uh, they check her, and 
and then we go home we go to the hotel and she has another then then she has her second pre-check which is four hours before the flight so that was 6 a.m because the flight was at 10 and uh the, the first pre-check the day before the crate stays the it's policy the crate has to stay uh at the cargo agency at sea air so we went the next morning at six I was pretty tough because that was, I knew that was when I'd be, I'd be leaving her. We had a long checklist. We had to make sure that everything, uh, everything being the last time she ate, <laughs> last time she peed, uh, if she was on any meds, which she wasn't, where was her food? We had to tie uh, her food and water containers to the crate. Then her crate was also zip tied the top to the bottom, even though it was already bolted. It's very, very specific. And so we went through the checklist, which was several pages. Uh, and then, and then we were good to go. Then so we, I had to, then I put her in the crate and I had to say my goodbye and, uh, and, and we left. And then she would be transported um, within, I think two hours, she was going to be transported from that warehouse over to uh, Copa Cargo. Once I found out, a couple of weeks before I left, once I found out and figured out after talking to Capital Authentication Agency, the Panama Consulate and Janine at Sea Air, once I fully realized that all of this is going to happen, all that paperwork and all that stress and anxiety is all going to happen the 48 hours before leaving, then I didn't, I, I just kind of thought, okay, uh, then it's all going to happen. I dropped Jim off we leave we immediately go to the airport we check in and uh, I had been told uh, a couple of weeks prior that there would be a small possibility or that there is a small possibility Jem may not make my the same flight as us so I had made it clear to see air that that I would not take that flight if there was not room for Jem and I was instructed to board the plane as soon as you board which I did, you talked to the uh, pilot, which I did. And I said my name, showed them my passport, and I said I have a live animal in uh, cargo. If she doesn't fit, then I need, we need to um, deplane. They under, he understood completely, he had already received the manifest. So we sat down and I didn't even get comfortable. And within 10 minutes, they came over and they gave me the thumbs, thumbs up. And, and then it was a release, then I was, yeah, I, it, I, I got choked up. I just like, then I went, okay, like it's happening. Cause it wasn't happening until that moment. And yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty exciting. So the preparations ahead of time, I contacted the uh, contact that is in Jackie's guide for the paperwork at the Minsa end. And uh, so that was all handled. And, uh, but again, last every you know everything happening the last 48 hours and literally the last probably 12 hours was when I was sending PDFs back and forth uh, on my phone to the contact because uh, C Air had to have copies of what the contact here in Panama was doing uh, before Jem could even get on the plane so it was all you know back and forth very quickly uh, but yes, the contact at Panama City had everything that he needed to do ready to go. So we got off the plane. I didn't completely realize that live animals are um, offloaded first. So uh, she was waiting in immigration for us for, at, it took us at least 45 minutes to get through. So by the time I, I got to her, she was, not that she was stressed, but she was, she was pretty wimp, you know, whimpering uh, quite, a, quite a bit. Uh, however, as soon as she saw me and I had treats in my pocket for her and uh, she, you know, she, she calmed down. And so, yeah, the, uh, the contact handled everything at immigration. It took a very long time though. It took her longer to get through immigration than us. And then it came back out the last time. He said, okay, this is the most important piece of paper. And then it was the home quarantine. So uh, he said, keep this with you. Uh, they may come and visit uh, at the Airbnb. And he said, if they do, uh, you have to show them this paper. They, they didn't. Uh, and, and we were good to go. And then we left and went, went to the hotel. We stayed overnight at the hotel. 
and uh, the contact had informed me several months prior that um, most dogs, and especially Jim, uh, it's too stressful to take a third flight. Remember, we had taken two flights, so it's too stressful to take a third flight into David. Uh, so he recommended driving. We hired a driver recommended in the guide, and he transported us and all of our luggage and Jam and also a friend of ours, Noni. Uh, she uh, had arrived the day before with her dog, Coyote, and we had made friends uh, through the PRT group, and uh, we connected privately and found out that we were arriving just within a day of each other. So the three of us and our two dogs, uh, we drove in uh, the private transport from Panama City uh, to Boquete. That took us seven hours. Uh, as far as if and when we took a tour, we had a tour book for September 2020 and that got cancelled due to COVID. So our plan B was uh, to take a private tour, fly down in April, take a private tour and scope out where we, you know, have an idea where we wanted to live. I was still working at the time, so I wasn't retired uh, yet. And there were some changes, policy changes made at my at my uh, with my employer so then our plan c was just to sell everything and move cold buy the guide which we did which i had already done then fast forward april uh, for the tentative for the private tour had to cancel that and then plan c was um, sell everything and move down cold which is which is what we did and we used the guide and several of the contacts within the guide and we had first visited panama in 2014 and knew that Panama was where we wanted to retire. And once we had arrived in Boquete, we were on an adventure tour. Immediately knew Panama was probably, was most likely the country. And then as soon as we got to Boquete, it, it, sounds, it sounds corny. However, it's true. We knew as soon as we got to Boquete, we wanted to start here. Yeah, uh, Jem, yeah, yeah, Jem loves it here. Uh, the first, we've been here, what, seven months now. And the first full four months, every morning, I don't know, 5.30, 6 o'clock every morning, she sleeps with me because she's elderly and she's got a little bit of anxiety now. So she's more comfortable sleeping with me at night. But every morning it was pawing at me, pawing at me to get up. She knew, she knows our morning walk and she was just racing, wanting, racing, wanting to get up and get out there. So she... Was, now she has not so much anymore, but the first three, four months was every morning. So she loves the walks, the smells. I mean, how, right? The smells and, and yeah, it's just, she loves it. The weather, I mean, yeah, it's great. Uh, I have taken her to the vet for a checkup. Uh, that was $20. And I took her to another vet for blood work because again, she's elderly. So uh, once a year, I like to get all the, blood everything done for her blood work which I'll show because several years ago she did have some minor um, liver um, elevation uh, level uh, blood levels uh, that was a hundred dollars and in Canada I paid over 200 for this same set of tests so she's been for a checkup she's been for blood work and then very recently as a matter of fact two weeks ago she had a, uh, a checkup with the cardiologist because the vet here about um, two months ago uh, found she has um, heart arrhythmia, which can be a serious condition. However, when the cardiologist arrives, uh, cardiologist is here once a month. So she had her checkup with the cardiologist and that was an hour long checkup with uh, blood work and uh, ultrasound and then another type of test where uh, the clamps were placed underneath her armpits and her heart was tested for quite uh, at least 15 minutes. And all of that testing, including the local vet was also there. So all of that testing and the meds, because she's now on um, heart medication twice a day for four months, was $160. In Canada, the cardiologist alone would have been double that. So uh, very affordable. Her food, uh, funny story about her food, because that was one of the, <laughs> it's going to sound crazy, but that was one of the, one of the two things that I was, I, I was kind of anxious about moving here is about getting her food because she has this very sensitive stomach. And so she's not actually on prescription food. 
and I found it here. I reached out to a contact in Jackie's Guide for finding uh, services and vendors here in Panama and she located uh, Gem Specialty Food and I had a bag of it waiting for me when we arrived at the end of July. And since then, I've been able to find two outlets here in Bocchetti that carry her food. So that's a win. <laughs> that's a win. It's the same price as it was in Winnipeg. So big relief. My advice, especially from Canada, is to connect with uh, an agency that can help you get the paperwork done faster. I use Capital Authentication Agency. Uh, they were stellar. Their customer service is absolutely stellar. They're based in um, Ottawa. And he, again, they're, they're fabulous. So that's my first line of my first recommendation is to save yourself the time and the frustration uh, by dealing with an agency that has done this for 15 years and they can help you with each, each step of the way. So that's my first recommendation. My second recommendation is know and understand that all that paperwork gets signed and gets processed literally the last 48 hours before you leave. So try not to stress for the four months before you leave or the one month before you leave. It will all come together. It will all uh, settle very nicely and uh, it, 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 it does work. It can be done. You can move here in 10 days or you can um, travel with your pet. Uh, within that 10 day time frame. Remember the health certificate uh, is valid for 30 days. However, it's the airlines that uh, require you to land in Panama or land, land in Panama on by the 10th day.